Genesis, the 17th chapter. start reading into your hearing verse 19 when you reach there please say amen not a matter as a matter of fact you say more than enough amen God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I've heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall, prince shall, be, shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. May the Lord add a extra blessing to his already blessed word. We want to continue on. Last week we, we talked about God show me my faith. This week we want to deal with, for our appointed time, that covenant is established through your faith. As I re-studied this word, I was led to revisit previous scripture. I, I literally went back. And started in the sixth chapter of Genesis. Because it's, it's important that we realize how God establishes and repeats what he does. Amen. God never had to redo anything. He just continues to do that what he does. So in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, at another very pivotal time when God was reestablishing in the earth, he spoke to Moses in the 17th chapter and said, Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee, I will establish my covenant. He says, and thou shalt come into the ark, and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with me. And, and, and what we see here is God in the midst of troubling times disappointing times as it relates to God's will for his people and the people's will for themselves. And God, once again, he, he picks out and pulls out a selected individual and establishes covenant, which is promises yeah. with his people in in, in, in the darkest of times. And, and, and what we're trying to do today is articulate to you that it is your faith 
that God is looking for to establish his covenant with you, his, 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 his outright promise to you. And we've already talked about how God is repetitious in the things that he does. In other words, God has no respect of person. He just has respect of promise. When he promises, he fulfills it. And no matter how it may look, no matter, to God be the glory, no matter how the surroundings may appear, oh my God, God says he, now watch this, is not going to, but has already stepped in on your behalf. He told Abraham, in this season yet to come, at this appointed time, Sarah will bring forth a child. See, God always wants you to connect your faith because by connecting your faith with him, that's where the promise is established. That's where the covenant is established. I love this word for he says, watch this in, in verse 1, when Abraham was 90 years old and nine. Yeah, that's what he, said. he was a minute away from 100. <laughs> and at this time, God waits to tell him this. He could have told him when he called him to go. But he waited. Look at your neighbor and tell him there's a certain time when God wants to call you into covenant. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. It's, it's based on God's timing, not your problems. But the irony is it's in your problem where the covenant is established. Because God, regardless of what Pope may think, he wants us to sacrifice, but he never asks you to sacrifice something you're not capable of providing. Mm. What God wants, watch this. He say, walk before me. Be thou perfect. He said, now, and I will. Listen, listen. It's time out for asking God and expecting from God when he can't expect from you. We're fooling ourselves. And, and, and it's in this setting right here where God is saying at this point, I am going to release unto you who have been faithful. Mm. You ain't seen nothing yet. It's the season of turnover as it relates to the ground, to the soil, so that it can mix in everything that's been working for your good. Every struggle, every seemingly, look, every fumble, every failure. God has been taking the juice from that. The juice being how you've handled it. And he's mixing it up. Because in that juice, in that fertilizer, it is provided victory by you standing still when you could have quit. It's in those things where your faith is aligned. Because if it had not been for the Lord on all of our sides, where would we be? God waits until he moves in your life in faith before he even adds importance to it. Because he will tap you on the shoulder and say to you, without what you just did, without faith, it's impossible for you to please me. And at that time, what he's doing is opening up a season of being pleased with you. And it's at this time that God will do for you. It says very plainly that 
Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And he begins to unfold the promises to Abraham. And he says, watch this. Neither shall thy name anymore be exalted father. Abraham, which means in the Hebrew tongue, exalted father. But, but no, Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For he's changed it from being singular to plural. And now he's saying you shall be still a father. Right. Let me park here for a minute. Yeah. God don't change what you are. A lot of us are looking for something different because we have yet still to be comfortable in our own skin. We want to be what they look like. And God is saying, I made you, shaped you, pulled you out of eternity, walked with you since you've been in your mother's womb. I know who you are. And I've been working for your good all this time. So what he does is he exalts that, that he's made you. I heard the Bible tell us that he has us all on that wheel. And through the trials and tribulations of our lives, he has shaped and reshaped and molded and remolded and made us vessels of honor. And now he's pouring us out to the world so the world can see us through covenant, through covering, through protection and through promises, through confidence and in authority. God wants to move right now in all of our lives. Watch this. He says, I will make thee exceeding fruitful. He goes back to Genesis and he, he multiplies it. And when he says, I, I want you to be fruitful, but I'm going to now establish because we have covenant, not just pure relationship. Oh, let me help you with something. I know I'm moving ahead of myself, but God says, what I made you in the garden you think that the devil beat me at something? I was already prepared because while I did not make you me, I made you in my image. And there's some things that had to be worked out in you. So you look more like me. So you had the capability, but now you have the authority. Oh, my God. The authority, the release, the power to make new. Come on, somebody. God said, at this point, I'm making you exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you. He didn't say prince. He said kings. He's establishing a world order right now and we don't realize it because we can't get by where we are. God is saying to us everywhere your feet touch, God is making a king or queen out of you. He's establishing you in the earth to carry forth his promises so that other folk can hear, see, and feel still the power of God, which means we can't be wishy-washy. Whatever it is that you're doing, you need to be confident in it and you need to make sure that that you're doing is in the will of God. Somebody say amen. He said, no more will your name be just Abram. It is now Abraham. Now watch this. In verse 7, before it even happens, he says again to him, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. Now, Abraham has to be standing there looking kind of weird. Trying to figure out where this seed is going to come from. He said, and I will establish in thee, generations with an everlasting covenant. I like the way God repeats things to make sure we understand it. I know there's some folk out here right now that God has repeated enough to you so many times. He's saying, I need you to embrace it. He said, I'm not a man that I can lie, nor a God that I change. I'm the same yesterday, today. What do I have to tell you? to get you to understand I'm serious about what I'm saying. Now in verse 8 he said, and I will give thee and thy seed after thee the land wherein that you are a stranger. Mm. Uh, God is saying in the word of prophecy that he's going to carry you to places that you don't even recognize. 
Mm, I don't hear no amens out there. Some folk looking for some things to occur in their life, but it ain't going to happen where you are. God is moving you. He's elevating you to an everlasting place of success, of leadership, of prosperity, of health, and and authority. God is going to move you to a higher place. All you got to do when he positions you at the king's table is don't sit down. You need to stand up and tell you're invited. Why? Because the scripture tells us if you sit down before it's the time, you can be asked to move. But God said, if you just move by my orders, if you let me order your steps, I'm going to have a seat for you already. When you get there, you just look upon the table and you will see and you begin to understand that that's my place. Why? Because you realize God does nothing for nothing. And even though you're not there yet, you can get relaxed in the fact that that's my place. I'm just waiting on God to say, sit down. God is trying to move on somebody right now. Some jobs about to open up. You ain't got to go nowhere. All you got to do is be steady where you are. Somebody say amen. I like that hatchet. All you got to do is be faithful where you are. God's going to put you in a place that he's already. Watch this. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's already done. Mm -hmm. He said, but to receive this intended blessing from God. We got to make some life-changing adjustments. You see, our faith must be aroused. You see, I want to stir up action within you so that I can get a strong response from you. You touched on it, but you, you ain't seen it, kid. And until you've seen it, you can't do it. But my brothers and my sisters, you can be it. Long before God opened up this church, it was there. We were looking for places to go and this was already there. From the inception, God wouldn't even let us, watch this. The, the, the folk could see where it had to go, that they had to make sure we was ready for it. You ain't hearing what I'm telling you. Wouldn't even let us put a lease on the building. Mm-hmm. Because he wanted to make sure that we were ready. Favor had already walked in front of us. How many folk you know that will open up a building to you and say you don't have to sign for it? You ain't hearing me for real. There's some stuff that's going to happen that's been laid out for you. God's been doing this since July of 1999. And it's time now for the release. And I know you hear these words, but watch this. The words don't change. But you have to change. He said, I want to stir up so I can get some excitement from you. I want to stimulate. I want to wake up your faith. Because many of us have faith that is dormant. It's, it's after faith. We talked about that before. Our faith is strong after we see the manifestation. But when we walk up on a wall and don't see a picture on it, God says, draw the picture from my spirit. We aren't capable. We won't lift our arms. Why? Because we're afraid we're going to make a mistake. And God is saying, out of you is no mistake that I placed in you. It's something new. So you can't see it compared to nothing else. What God is doing inside of you is, watch this, is an indication of the uniqueness that God has established in you. My brothers and my sisters, stop looking for it to already be here. If it's already there, God don't need you to do it. Mm. Say this message, listen. Real, I, I, when I looked at this thing, and you know I've been dealing with it so much, God, he's, he was talking to me so hard. And so, look, he said, you can really title this much message. Watch this. Leave, laugh, and listen. Because when he looked upon Abraham, he said, leave. And when he told him about the child, even though Abraham realized what it was to fall down on his knees and worship, the Bible says that in verse 17, and then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Man, God going to do some stuff in your life going to be so funny. You ain't going to understand it. All you're going to be able to do is laugh. You ain't going to be able to make sense of it. Tell your neighbor, that's one guy working. 
because then you can be sure it ain't you doing it. Abraham left at God after falling into a place of worship. It ain't that he didn't love him. It's not that he, I told you he already left. But what God is saying to him at this point, he can't make sense of it. How in the name, your name, can this be possible? Oh my God, I just stopped by just for a moment to tell you that thing you're dealing with. It's more than possible. It is, <laughs> and it is good because God has purposed it this way. What you talking about, Bishop? God is the one that said it to Abraham. Well, well, Abraham was already in this place. And God knew that he had to deal with this place. See, because some of us been placed in the garden but did not recognize the garden we were in. I kept wondering how in the name of love can Adam and Eve be in this perfect place and make mistakes? See, God gave us freedom of will, but our will was to do, not to reason. Oh, God, man, I love this word. He let us loose in the garden with a to-do list, but we had to reason. See, and we barked upon the tree of good and evil, which I want to not minimize, but articulate as this, the tree of of decision. See, everybody ain't ready for decision making. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff in us that God has to take care of to empower us before he releases the authority in us. That's why I say I got to move them or else they will be stuck in eternity Outside of my will. Oh, God. Man, God just thinks of everything. And we look at it, man, because the world has conditioned us to not think like God, which is more of a reason why we need to think like God. God's word ain't changed. I live in Genesis. I am who that word says. And God, be, look, all the glory to God, I stopped trying to realize it through my flesh, through my being. Because I came out of East and I am brother. Because I was an I am brother there. You ain't hearing me for real. But God had to break me and get me to a place where I, that am, is him and not me. He had to reposition my heart process. So he's given it to us but we perverted it because of our own decision making. Mm, ain't nobody going to say amen. He says, listen, Abraham laughing still had this condition that he had to deal with. Because like many of us, Abraham, when, 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 when this thing was directed to him, he looked in himself for the conclusion. And it allowed him to swiftly move outside of the will of God. Because we believe what God says, but not how he said to obtain. So we want to do it our way. God gave me a word and I took it and did what I wanted with it. So here comes, watch this, Ismael. Because God, look, God didn't need no help. But Abraham felt he had to help God. As obedient as he was, he had a faith con condition that had a deficiency. And this is why God deals with us right now. It ain't that he don't know. Why do you think it's working for our good? Because God has already established who we are. Not to become, but who we are. There's just a process. Somebody say process. So God knew this, and, and he catches Abraham at the, at the influx of his, watch this, self-fulfilling. And he, he, watch this. 
he gets a son. We know the story. And the son, the irony in this is, his name was Ishmael, which means, listen, God will hear. So Abraham, in his spirit man, is trying to answer this question that God has already gave him the answer to. And he's crying out to God, but he's laughing because he can't realize this is a place of worship. Mm. There's some things going on in your life that you're praying for and you're addressing it improperly because you're not embracing the fact that this is where God wants to show off in your life. He says, prove me. This is a place of him proving him through our faith. And through the establishment of covenant with us, life lasting, everlasting covenant. Meaning what God is going to do in your life right now is going to set the tone for the rest of your living. And not only for the rest of your living, but for the rest of your seed's living. Come on, somebody. If it ain't worth anything to you, think about your children. Think about the generations of people that you are going to touch. Because God has already told me that we're going to touch this nation. And we're going to touch it not in a small way, but a large way doing small stuff. The little things that are so often neglected. The little things will become much because God's going to put the faith that we have established with him in our covenant and even as the mustard seed which is filled with much, that little bit of stuff that you do, that you exemplify God in when it comes to your neighbor, even in the area of forgiveness and thought process, that God is a God that is a God of I am and not a God of maybe. Mm -hmm. He says, watch this. You've got to change the way you feel about relationship. Because even in Ishmael's, uh, uh, Abraham's desire that Ishmael will live, he doesn't know who God is. Because God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Why would God destroy him even though he did not tell you to do it? Mm. It's some of us right now that are living into in some of those yet blessings. God said not yet, but we did it anyhow. And we realize now and we think back on it and God is still keeping us. That's why we're crying out if it had not been for the Lord on our side. It ain't nothing that we thought we deserved. We got to get real with what we're saying. So we honestly understand who he is, not who we are. Even our fear is taking too much credit. We're giving it too much energy. Mm -hmm. He said, God is trying to bless us real good. But many of us, what we feel, especially when we feel a lack in our lives, we put God, look, we put stuff before God's will is for our lives. Abraham, at this point of God wanting to bless him and trying to release unto him bountiful blessing, God, Abraham's whole, all of his hopes and dreams was wrapped in Ishmael. He didn't even realize that God was about to give him something even greater while yet not taking from what he, Abraham, had done. That's the kind of God we serve. God is merciful God. God is a God that does not forget, but he's just a God that forgives. Come on, somebody. God is bigger than what you've done wrong. Mm. He still keeps him under the umbrella of his blessings. He tells him, I have heard you in verse 20. He said, I've heard you. I've heard you ask for Israel. Israel. And behold, I have blessed him. That's what he said. And I will make, I'm not finished with him. He's already blessed and I will make. So God's got his hand on him in the not just now, but in the future. Come on, somebody. God's got your problem. Release it to him. Trust God for his word. He said, but my covenant will be established in what I give you. What I give you, I want you to have the faith to give it back to me. What you love, I want you to give it back 
to me. Watch that, Hatchet. That's a good word because he says, thy only son. And Israel still existed. But God is looking from the perspective of who he is and what he's doing. He's giving a disclaimer as he's still claiming. He says, listen, Abraham had to see clearly the will and purpose of God in his life. He had to willingly accept and surrender to God's will. Somebody say, leave, laugh. But it's important that he also listen. God had to reaffirm his will and purpose in Abraham. God had to drive Abraham's heart to a place of change and intimacy with him as it relates to relationship. I've got three points and I want to get out of your way. The first one is God had to change Abraham's relationship with his family. Oh man, when God opened this thing up to me, it blessed my soul because I began to understand why Eve had to eat the fruit. I'm about to help somebody. Study tells you this. Say, God wants us to realize the blessings we have in a wife. See, Abraham did not yet pay attention to his wife the way he did, where he should have. Oh, I got some naysayers. Watch this. He never claimed it for himself. All right, sir. That's why when trouble happened, Abraham disowned it. Is that wife you gave me? If you hadn't put her in my life, I wouldn't have these problems. See, some of us have said, I do, and live, I don't. We live, I don't. Man is a lot in the eyes of God and has multiple responsibilities. But God has put us in the earth, my brothers, to cover the garden. He ain't had to make the garden come out of us. Oh, you ain't hear me for real. See, the blessings of God are in your Christian wife. That's why God says it like this. Whosoever findeth a wife, find a good thing. Watch this. And favor. Ah, why favor? Because it takes a lot. Don't you minimize that. It takes a lot. People be like, Bishop, I, I, I want a wife like, boy, you better watch what you say. Because I got to do self-check sometime so I can keep walking in what God has called me to be. Because there ain't no doubt what he called me to be. A man, somebody say amen. A man don't put his hands on no woman. A man don't cuss out what is his. A man don't walk out on what is his. We need to stop trying to make something out of nothing. Too many of us have been straddled with boyfriends and girlfriends. And we lack four, four, what is the word? Fortitude. To be able to handle marriage. That's why God gives us favor. Man, if you can't do no more in your marriage when stuff get tight, just say, I got favor. Just walk in favor. Even if you don't understand it, you can't see it, just claim it. I got favor, everything I touch. Don't walk around like this, afraid to touch something because you're not sure. There should be a boldness because God said it. Watch this. He said, husbands love your wives even as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it. He didn't say if she act right, if she look right, if she cook right, if she shut up right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I ain't scared. Because sometimes you just want to say, shut up. <laughs> if you got to say it, cut your mic off. There was a little girl in here once saying, you got to do it to yourself. You've been on my nerves sometimes. 
and try not to make your lip because you know they can read lips. I saw what you said. <laughs> Say yeah! yeah! Watch this, watch this. Look what God does. He does it now. He reestablishes Abraham's relationship with his wife. I'm going to take all of that nothing that you're saying. All of that stuff you're worn with. And I'm about to bless it. And the only way you can uh, uh, open up these blessings is with the key. My brothers, and the key is the way you treat her. Man, I, I have searched, God, why? You know, because I just can't go for anything. I, I got to dive in that world because I've been searching. Why did this happen? And God would never let me say it was either one of them fault. I had to find satisfaction in his word. He said, seek me, meditate daily. Don't go in another direction. I don't care what the noise is saying. You got to find your answer in God. To understand a God thing, you got to go to God with that thing. Not only did God do that thing, <laughs> but you got to go to him with that thing. God gives her a new name in the same chapter. And God said unto Abraham, I, I didn't just change your name. Yes, I'm changing your wife's name from strife, contention, quarrelsome to princess Sarah. He said, I want you to call her as thus. I gave you a chance to name her in the garden. And you gave her a name for everybody else, but not for you. You didn't name her for the place she holds in your life. Uh, you named her for the place and position she holds in life. So I need you to embrace her differently. Because if you don't love her like the church, you can't operate like my man. Man, God is so merciful. He allows us to go through knowing that revelation is at the end of realness. When you get real, revelation follows you. Somebody say amen. He said, she was blessed to bear the promised seed. She holds the promises of God at her disposal. What are you saying, Bishop? That she releases what God has established for y'all. Are you hearing me? If you don't treat your wife right, she will not have an auction to release those things into the atmosphere that you have authority and dominion over. You'll have nothing over nothing. We say in computer world, garbage in, garbage out. If we don't live right towards our wives, forget what she's supposed to do. Because if God held us to what we're supposed to do, Mm. Mm. Look at your neighbor, brothers, and say it's a man thing. She has the authority already to bring forth great blessings upon her family. See, and wives, you got to understand that, that, that you only have this authority because of your covering. Oh, I ain't hear no amens in the hand. You, you can't do this on your own. See, God has in you what's necessary to help your covering. See, help me does not mean, oh, y'all were saying amen a few minutes ago. Help me does not mean in place of.
some of you brothers from Southeast, y'all tasted the wine. <laughs> we had two nickels and one bottle of Ripple between all of us. Didn't even care, didn't even wipe it off, just went for it. <laughs> that joker would kill all the germs. <laughs> I told you revelation comes after realism. Number two. God had to change Abraham's worship. I'm coming in. He changed it to operate in astonishment. See, see, your worship should be filled with possibility. You praise him for what he's done, but you worship him because of the possibilities of what God can do. God, I'm praising you for the yet in my life. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You, I, I'm, no, I'm worshiping you because you got get right in you. Whatever's wrong in me, if I worship you, if I bow down before you, angels, I go, start adoring you through my worship. They already adoring him, but they're going to adore him more through your worship because God is making a special place for your worship with him. Mm. Heard somebody call it. What's that one? I just want to make sure some of y'all was with me. He wants his worship to be executed not only in astonishment, but in joy. While you're yet dealing with stuff, you got to have worship in your spirit that says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not only the possibility, but because of the relationship. Because sometimes you just can't put your name on it. You don't know what to call it. But you know you're strong in it. Because it's still work. You know, sometimes bad stuff take a long time to work its way out. But because you have this joy, you can wait for it to be worked out. And, and here's the third thing. God wanted him to operate not in the Israel praise, but the Isaac worship. Hmm. The Isaac worship is attributed to his name. And his name means God listens. <laughs> Ain't nobody hearing this. See, Ishmael was God hears. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. But you ever you ever heard somebody but you wasn't listening? But you ain't listening. And when you don't listen, the expectation from you for reaction is zero. But when you realize that God listens, that you are part of the I've heard. So he wants you to worship him as such. And the third one, and I, I promise you I'm finished. God, through relationship, through the covenant, through the promise, through the reality that Abraham left laughed and listened. It equaled sacrifice. It equaled proof of the fact that God was near the minute things 
in his life. As a matter of fact, his faith was so strong that he had already set up the, the atmosphere for his return. He said, we will be back. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at your neighbor and tell him God has already promised you will be back. He will restore you. He will bring you to a better place. He will prosper you. He will make your crooked street straight. He will provide. He is a God that listens to your very need. And then God wants this one thing from you, a lifetime declaration of who he is. No matter what you encounter, you constantly are declaring who God is. Yes, sir. 